when we have an internal cultivation that is healthy, when we like cultivate health in our bodies, we're open to finding more healthy opportunities and we're open to seeing more things, you know? Seeing that there's opportunity all around us and uh, we feel better in our lives, right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> So the Eastern medical philosophy is that all life occurs within the circle of nature. Everything is connected. And this is true of most traditional philosophies, that we are connected to nature. Is someone whistling something from Pocahontas? No. Okay. So nature, nature is a matrix in which all things are connected. So for example, we know that many things that we try to do to clean up a problem just create another problem, right? So when we have, we live in the desert southwest, and when we go river rafting or to some of our rivers, we will often see tamarisk trees, which are not native, and are a very bad thing to use to hold up the riverbanks in a desert. <coughs> they suck up so much water. And they grow and they spread like wildfire. So we know that those were brought in to hold up riverbanks, but they had an unintended consequence of um, really wasting a lot of our water and taking it uh, from us in an area where we don't have a lot of water. We know that the mongoose was brought into Hawaii as a solution for I think, snakes or something, and um, that it ended up, it was for rats, for rats, I think. And it ended up um, not only eating the rats, but also eating other small farm creatures. And uh, the mongoose also really um, propagates, you know, and really uh, reproduces itself at alarming rates. And so Hawaii began to have a problem with the mongoose after that. Um, so the human body survives, according to Eastern medicine, in the same matrix as the rest of nature. So when we disrupt the balance of our nature, when we bring in something else and we have it in excess, then we will have a change throughout our entire um, organism in many cases. So for example, if antibiotics are overused, there will often be consequences such as yeast overgrowth or antibiotic resistant bacteria that are left there as the only soldiers that can then like take over the turf, right? And, um, other things like that happen all the time. So there are many, many drugs that are created, that have been created, that we could almost say that the side effect is more reliable than the actual treatment that is promising, the actual benefit that is promising. We're gonna look at a video later on in this class uh, that talks about this idea of the number needed to treat. So um, with with drugs and with treatments, uh, there is something called number needed to treat. And it is this idea that there are a certain number of people that that drug will not work for before one person is helped. And this is commonplace. And for some drugs, this number could be 100 or 1,000 people that are needed to treat that this will not help before one person is helped. And it's an important thing to look at before you start taking a medication. All right, so Eastern medical philosophy looks at the whole of the organism and at the whole of nature. We're looking at the way in which we're connected and the way in which things work together. So in traditional Chinese medicine, human beings represent the junction or the meeting place between heaven and earth. And that's why that, the book is called Between Heaven and Earth. So it's not hard to see that, you know. So traditional Chinese medicine teaches that to harm a part is to harm the whole. To do good to one part is to do good to the whole. For example, what is good or bad for the body is good or bad for the mind. What is good or bad for the couple is good or bad for the family. What is good or bad for the family is good or bad for society. What is good or bad for society is good or bad for, we keep going, but like the world, right? So traditional Chinese medicine draws heavily from, this is the one that's on your little packet, the Huangdi Neijing, right? 
H-U-A-N-G-D-I, N-E-I-J-I-N-G, Huang Yi Ning. And I'll bring that in during break. It's an ancient medical text, which is believed to have been written during the Chinese Warring States period. This is 475 to 221 BC, and during the early Han period, which is 206 BCE to 220 CE. It's kind of a, I'll read a little section of it to you, but it's sort of a question and answer type format between Huang Di and Qi Bo, um, the physician that he, he talks to. So it'll be like, why does this happen, Qi Bo? The yellow emperor will say that. Qi Bo will say, well, what I found is this. So I'll read a little section later. Okay. In ancient times, the Eastern physician as legend has it, received pay only when the patient was healthy. Christian, would you mind closing the door? Yeah, out there. Thank you. So the Eastern physician, did you guys hear that? That's like super cool, right? That's like an amazing new insurance plan that we should all buy into. Yeah. So the patient only paid the physician when they were healthy. And then the moment they got sick, because of course, yeah, then they stopped paying the physician and they received free care. And they did not start paying the physician again until they were healthy. So you had to pay when you were healthy, or the government would kill you. I'm kidding. No, but the government <laughs> would, I forgot what would go with our system, right? So the government would have a penalty, you know? So you'd have a penalty of some sort, hopefully just a small monetary amount that did not hurt people. So there was some violence. These were not perfect times, but I didn't mean to go there. Okay, so medical-wise, so you would pay the physician when you were healthy. And then if you got sick, then you'd be completely cared for. And the physician had, had actually incentive to help you become healthy because then once you were healthy, you would start paying again. You'd pay for your health care as long as you were healthy. But it makes a lot of sense because when is it very difficult to pay for health care? When is it most, most difficult? When you're sick, right? So I, as a business owner, um, I have health insurance, but uh, you have to pay for your health insurance, right? So I have to keep paying that like five or $600 a month or whatever it is um, if I was really sick. And I still have to keep things together at work because if I am too sick to be at work, then you could potentially, what are you gonna do, you know? Maybe you have things in place where your business could last, you know, maybe you do, but not everyone does. And, uh, and so it would be very difficult. Um, not all jobs allow you to indefinitely take a leave of absence, you know? And so losing health insurance during a time of sickness is unfortunately a reality for many people in our country. So anyway, so the system of paying when you're healthy and then no payment when you're sick and then payment when you're healthy again makes a lot of sense. It also makes a lot of sense from a preventative medical standpoint in helping people to cultivate, spring and cultivating lifestyles that are healthy. I was talking to, I, I've actually spoken with many, many physicians and some are amazing, you know, but among the ones that do not talk to their patients about lifestyle choices or give them an alternative that is uh, something that may be more effective but would take some work, typically the belief is the patient won't do it anyway. So they would talk to the patient and they would tell them about diet and they would tell them about exercise, but it's too simplistic, right? And, uh, and so they will just leave that out and give them the drug because 
uh, because they already know, they already assume that the patient is not going to follow a plan and take the initiative and put in the effort to really change. And that's unfortunate that we don't have that expectation uh, that people would um, listen to their physician and then actually buy into it and take steps towards being really healthy. But Eastern medicine really, to a large degree, counts on the patient following the doctor's plan so that they become healthy again, including things like meditation and dietary changes and uh, things like not being so angry at other people and uh, really paying attention to your emotions and uh, working towards being a kinder person and contributing to society. So even on the level of that, you know, we know that these things help people to be happier and they help them to be healthier. Okay. So the role of the Easter physician is to prevent illness and to nurture, monitor, and cultivate the life of the patient. Chi and movement of Chi, as we mentioned in the beginning of this lecture, are at the heart of traditional Chinese medicine. In Ayurveda, the term prana is used and Thailand uses the word what? Sen. 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 Right. Okay. Yes. Sen. So all of these terms represent the idea of a driving force which can either be stagnant, unhealthy, or free-flowing, healthy. So in Eastern medicine, the physician regulates qi. All right. We're going to take a break right here because we have some more lecture, but I think it's a good stopping place. And should we take our full break? Okay, so we'll go ahead and be back at 7.40. This turned off.